Good evening, everyone. Time for my weekly update. There's not a lot new since my report last week going on. We continue to work on reopening the church, and we did have 100 people at the Mass on uh, Sunday morning, this past Sunday morning, so we'll keep it open for that many. Only about half that many signed up for Saturday night, so there's still plenty of room for that. We have also started the daily Mass, and as we can get some more of those daily Mass goers trained as uh, volunteers, we can add back more than just Monday and Wednesday. My hope is by the end of the month we'll have more than just Monday and Wednesday uh, on the docket. So we're looking good in that regard. We also got some information from the Office of the Catholic Schools and the Archbishop's Office about the procedures for reopening the school. It's quite extensive, and our principal, Ms. Roy, is going to be forming teams to help reform, reopen the school with curriculum and how we schedule and how we place the people in some e-learning or taping lessons. Or It's going to be a very complicated process. And the, of course, the cleaning and the, and the uh, safety issues will continue to be paramount. There is a um, government program that's approved um, funds for all schools to help them reopen for cleaning supplies and other types of things like uh, specialized learning and things. So we'll be able to avail ourselves of that money. So hopefully the additional cost of reopening will be borne mostly by federal dollars. Which brings me to another subject. A couple of people have asked questions based on what was in the papers this past week about the, the PPP loans, the Small Business Association payroll protection loans that have gone out uh, to throughout the country. And the big publication was there's like over four billion given to the Catholic Church, and that may or may not be true. I don't know what um, all was given, but what happens for each of the parishes, we were allowed to apply for funds to cover eight weeks of payroll and some amount of utilities necessary to keep the parish open, and that was given to other businesses as well. So between the parish and the school, based on our payroll or for eight weeks, we were eligible for about $400,000 of loans. And we've got that money and back in May, and we've spent it on eight weeks of payroll, uh, which helps, of course, keep our losses down for the year, certainly helps our cash flow. That money will not be available. That went to all the parishes, most of the parish in the archdiocese applied for it. The archdiocese itself, the main office, as you might call it, uh, did not apply and did not receive any money. The payroll program is for the, for us, for our people. Our people, our employees, our teachers, our staff are just like you and me and everybody else. By the way, the pastor's salary is not included in that either. But they have families and jobs to protect and kids to feed and schooling at home as well. And the teachers did an incredibly outstanding job trying to do e-learning on top of everything else. And that's very difficult, particularly staying at home and doing that. And so that money was spent like other parishes and other small businesses throughout the nation to keep us open, to keep our people up, the unemployment rolls, and then allow, obviously, for the continuation of our operations. The Archdiocese, of course, doesn't have a whole lot of money to spare. Its people are paid for a parish assessment that every parish pays every year, about 10% of its annual collection, and that goes to provide for the operations only. So the Archdiocese provides all of us services that each parish could not prov provide. Legal services, for example, without their help, we wouldn't have gotten the payroll protection loan money in the first place, that $400,000. They also provide all the health insurance benefits. We pay for them, but they process that. We couldn't, a parish couldn't do have a, an insurance policy for a small number of people by itself property and casualty insurance, human resources, obviously all the family ministries, those other types of ministries that are down there. So all that goes from us to pay for those folks downtown, but the same thing. Those people are all like you and me and, and the people you know. They're people with families and they kept their jobs going because if the parishes couldn't pay them, their people would have to be furloughed or let go and then we wouldn't have gotten the services that we've been getting for the last several months. So that money has come and gone, and um, I can't speak for other dioceses. I understand from the news that some of the other chancery offices did receive it. Um, I don't know the legality of all that or how it was done, but we did not apply for that as an archdiocese. The only funds we got from the government were those payroll protection loans that went to each of the parishes. So that was a great boon to us because that obviously saved us $400,000 that we didn't have to take out in savings 
or furlough or let go of our own people so we're able to continue our operations and we're well positioned to open up uh, again in the fall for school and of course as we get more volunteers and and um, you know more people back and hopefully with either treatment good treatment or a vaccine we'll be able to get back to more normal operations as we move forward a lot of that depends of course on the general population how the people in illinois and chicago in particular react to the reopening if they're going to use sound safety procedures or will we see will we see a huge resurgence of the coronavirus that they're seeing in texas and florida and california which of course has been causing their governors to backpedal and close things down. So hopefully that won't happen here and hopefully we can continue to move forward. So that's all a very positive note really. So I think I owed you that explanation. So other than that, getting ready for school, we, uh, most of our other staff are finally taking some vacation. The, the teachers of course are on vacation. Our faith formation staff is on vacation. They get the, the month of July off, although they're in contact by email. So we haven't made any progress on planning the sacraments to do the, the uh, First Communion and the Rite of Initiation that we were supposed to have last year during the shutdown. We'll get that some, sometime late August probably or early in the fall. And then hopefully we can get back to the normal uh, schedule of events. And so the Faith Formation Program, once we've got all the protocols in place for keeping the school clean, then we can figure out how we'll ha then have the Faith Formation classes on campus because they have their classes in the school buildings on Saturdays. So all of that's in process. Uh, we're going to continue to do online meetings and things like that with the families to try to make sure that all gets done. So that's continuing in process. So things are going well, all things considered. Finally, there's another thing on the horizon that we haven't paid a whole lot of attention to, at least not publicly anyway, and that's Renew My Church. As I talked about some time ago, um, the process for New My Church involves our parish, St. Pascal's, Our Lady of Victory, and St. Constance. We're a grouping team, and we've been meeting as pastors and with the people downtown about the whole process. And we had our first meeting a few weeks ago. We had our first small team meeting here in the parish uh, last week. And our first group meeting that has the small groups from each parish will be taking place on August 4th, and I will be putting more information out about how that happens. But basically, we're all going to look at our strengths and weaknesses and some, find some way we can find the synergies of our parishes, which may or may not include any, any closings or mergings. Probably there'll be some sharing. There'll probably be some merging of parishes or schools or, or worship sites with remaining open, but nothing is clear yet exactly how that's going to be. We haven't yet met to discuss the specifics. So that's on the horizon, but we do know that if things go as planned, the Cardinal will make that decision based on our input and based on the feedback from the Renew My Church management team, which includes the bishops and includes uh, some priests that are on the groupings, but also a lot of lay people that are involved with, with what it means to be a parish and what that impact would be. And that decision will be probably made in late November, so and to be effective be July 1st of next year. So we're still us for the current year. There'll be some changes, and I think all parishes are kind of scared about what those might be. But we work together and we do the best we can. We're well positioned in many in many ways with a wonderful school building, you know, good support uh, in the school, good support in the parish. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, we'll come out. Not the same, but certainly uh, viable for the future. But again, no promises, no guarantees, because that's really kind of up to what the grouping decides and then uh, how the cardinal presents that and uh, reacts to that rather and makes his decision. So not to fret about it for now. Too many other problems on our plate, but um, I will keep you informed as that goes forward. Certainly other parishes will also be uh, in touch with their people to do the same. So a lot of things going on in some ways. Um, but I simply suggest that we simply keep praying for each other. Please come to back to Mass as soon as you feel safe. Please volunteer if you can. Please check in on your neighbors. We've had a couple of days of coolness before it gets hot again, and that's a good thing. But please check in on each other. Please, please pray for one another, particularly our health care workers and our first responders, and pray for a return to sanity and civility in our public discourse. God bless you all, and have a great week.